Okay, first of all, forgive me, sisters. Uh, sisters are included in everything I said in the khutbah. So I was saying brothers, brothers. I should have said brothers and sisters. So forgive me for that. Because uh, alhamdulillah, I can't see you, so I didn't realize you were here. So, okay, so please explain to the young boys and girls how to balance their academic education and study in Islam. This is a very good question. Um, it's something that for many years, as I traveled around UK going to universities um, and colleges, that I saw this problem. You see, here's the problem, brothers and sisters. And I'm sure most of you, if any of you have got degrees, or even if you remember what you learned at school and college, how much of what you learnt in school and college is relevant to your life right now? How much of that knowledge and information do you even use? Even if you have a degree. I know many people who have degrees in subjects and they never use the knowledge they studied in that degree. They go on to do something else. They, become, they get a degree in biomechanical engineering. Do they become a biomechanical engineer? No. If, I don't even know if that exists, by the way. I'm just making a biomechanical... Do they do that? No. They, they become, you know, they sell stuff on Amazon. <laughs> they run a shop. Seriously? No, I know. I know 100% this is the case. Even people, even people who become doctors. I have a relative of mine through marriage. He said, I can teach you everything you need to know to be a GP in three weeks. A GP is a general practitioner. In three weeks, I can teach you everything you need to know. They spend seven years. How much of the knowledge do they really use? So, it's amazing the level of intelligence, of capability, and that's partly what a degree is. Partly a degree is, it's showing your ability to be consistent in applying yourself in terms of studies. So the idea is that it shows that you have that capability and they think that that, you know, they presume that that might be useful in workplace. But in reality, this is, and I'm, I'm, please don't get me wrong, I'm not discouraging people from getting degrees. But if anyone is a businessman here, I'm sure you know very well, you're not interested in the piece of paper. You don't care what degree a person has got. All you really care about is the person is adaptable. Adaptable means the person can adapt to different situations. They are good learners and they can do the job. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for someone who can do the job. Even Google. They say we don't care what degree you've got. We don't care what's on your piece of paper. That's not what we're looking for. It's famous. Google don't care. You can have all the qualifications. They don't care. Because they realize that not, that's not what makes a good company. I'm not discouraging people from getting a degree. But what I'm saying is put it into perspective. Now I want you to imagine you're going to stand in front of Allah. On the day of judgment. Don't imagine. It's going to happen for sure. You're not going to be able to offer your degree to Allah. As some way of get out of hell card. You know, a degree is not a get out of hell card free. A get out of hell card. You know, you know what I'm saying. So the point being here is that I find it very strange is that people who have, the, they clearly have the ability to study, to apply themselves. And they do it to something that for most people, 90% of it, even more 99%, they will never use. Even if you went on to actually follow and pursue that particular subject. Then how is it we neglect to study our deen? How is it we are so ignorant about our religion? This is very scary and very worrying, brothers and sisters. Actually, I recommend that all my brothers and sisters who are studying, whether in college or where, whether at degrees, you should give as much time, if not more time, to learning and studying your deen. Now, alhamdulillah, in UK, Many of the brothers and sisters who are, who are there studying are also involved in the Islamic society. Not only, alhamdulillah, learning and studying Islam in university, but also giving da'wah and organizing events and lectures so other people can learn about Islam as well. 
This is very good and in the UK this is very good and positive. The other thing that is very important is this. Is that even when we study something that is not directly, you know, sharia based knowledge, we can still get a benefit from it through having the right niya, the right intention. So this is important that we take some time when we're thinking about what we want to study or what we want our children to study. The what is my intention? If my intention is, I want my child to become a doctor or an engineer because that's prestigious and everybody's going to say, MashaAllah, MashaAllah, doctor, engineer. This is not a good niya. This is not the right intention. Your intention is only some worldly benefits. And you will not get rewarded for this. Actually, you may even find you will get punished for this. And I found this many cases in England. Parents have come to me from Muslim family backgrounds, Asian families, Muslim families, Moroccan families, complaining about their children. Their children do not care about this. We tell them how important it is to, you know, Abdurrahim, tell them, give a lecture on honoring your parents and being good to your parents. But when I talk to these parents, I found that these parents made all of their effort into telling their children to learn this and study so you can earn money and you can have good dunya. And that's all they cared about was dunya, dunya, dunya. So if you teach your children to run after the dunya like a non-Muslim, why are you now going to expect them when it comes to you, they will teach you, treat you like a Muslim? No, they will say, this is what you taught me, now go to the old age home. I will pay, you can go there. Some professional people can look after you. I'm not a professional nurse, how can I look after you? That's what you taught them. Why are you complaining? What you, you, we have a saying in England, what you sow, you reap. What you sow, you reap. If you, if you have a field and you sow thorns, you will get thorns. What you sow, if you sow corn, you will get corn. If you sow flowers, you will get flowers. What you sow, you reap. It's the same with your children. What you sow, you reap. If you sow dunya, dunya, dunya in the head, doctor, engineer, mashallah, that's all you will create, people with kibr and pride and love for dunya, and they will not care for you. If, if they do care for you, well, you're lucky. That's all I can say. You see? So what, so now even, it's, and sometimes all it is is niya. So if you have the intention, I want, child, I want you to be a doctor. Why? Not because of honor, not because of prestige, because if you are a doctor, you can save lives. And the one who saves a life is like they save all of humanity. You can help people. You can help the poor. You can help the needy. You can help everyone. And alhamdulillah, it's a good vehicle for you to invite people to Islam even. Become an engineer. Why? Because we Muslims, we need to have good infrastructure. We need to build the strength of our nations. Alhamdulillah, you can make the Ummah of Muhammad strong. You see, this is a big difference. It's the whole world of difference. Just on a niyyah. So now from something that you get no reward, you have, can you imagine now, the huge reward that you get just with the niyyah. So this is the other thing that, alhamdulillah, actually as Muslims, we need to study every subject. It's what's called fard al kifaya. In Islam, we had fard al ain and fard al kifaya. Fard al ain is the subject, that stuff we all need to know. We all need to know the aqidah, the correct aqidah. We all need to pray. Every Muslim has to pray five times a day. Every Muslim has to fast Ramadan. Every Muslim who has the money has to give zakah. If you don't, of course you don't. If you can afford it, you have to make hajj. So there's things that are fard al ain. We all have to do it. Every individual. But there's some things that as long as some of us do it, alhamdulillah, the rest of us are excused. But if none of us do it, we are all guilty. So every knowledge and every subject that will help the strength of the Muslims is fard al kifaya. We have to know it. We have to. Some of us have to know it. Enough of us. Yeah. 
So even just with this near, just with this intention that this is something, the Muslims, we need to know this knowledge. So some of us need to study it. Son, daughter, you need to study this. Alhamdulillah. But always the motivation is Islam. The motivation is to please Allah. The motivation is to help the Ummah. And to help humanity, by the way, because helping the Ummah is not a selfish thing. It's not... Because what is, as you heard from my khutbah, what is the motivation of the ummah? The motivation of the ummah is to bring the light and the guidance and the beauty and the happiness of Islam to all humanity. You see? It's not selfish. Because what drives the ummah should be the love for the, not just humanity by the way, for every creature. Every single creature. You know when I talk about how backwards we are? I talked about workers' rights, even animal rights. The, the non-Muslims teach us animal rights. They have to teach us. We should be the head. The head of it, the Prophet ﷺ taught us these things. How to be kind to animals, how to treat animals. Even this the Prophet taught us. This is 1,400 years ago before the RSPC and all of those things. Uh, the Prophet is teaching us ﷺ these things. But we've lost all of this. It's so sad. It's so sad. Anyway, this is our condition.